Why would a king give up his crown? He's dropping down to the back of the zone. He picks up the elimination. Three, nine, one. That elimination has won Mr. Savage and Benji Fishy. The dream hack open for chapter two, season eight. And he's popping but off he's with one done. more. What can possibly satisfy a champion who has already reached the top? I am officially quitting competitive Fortnite to pursue Valorant. Why would someone step away from glory, fame, and everything they've ever known to take a chance on the unknown. For me, I I'm a very competitive person and Fortnite isn't a very competitive game. Benji Fishy risked everything. He dropped the game that made him a superstar to chase his dreams elsewhere. And despite all the hardships he faced, he found the one thing greater than victory. Light shields across the board too, which makes Runner a deadly threat. But Benji Fishy's quick to adjust. That's uh -oh. one, make it two for Benji. His sheriff is clean! But with the nade exploding right now, they should have plenty of time. Benji Fishy trying no. to be the thorn in the side. Big kill from Mini Boo. Dirk is low. Oh, and Dirk is down. Chronicles in the same no. position. What a shot! No one but one with the kills, and Simon! With this me, Benji. Brings it to that 1v2 to clutch. He'd love to win. Nobody offers up the kill anyway. And catches it. Yeah! Oh. And Chichu catches a bullet straight to the dome. Benji. All right, so before we get into Benji Fishy's incredible journey, a friendly reminder to please like the video, sub to the channel, and turn on notifications. It really does help. Okay, so these days, Benji, Benji Fishy Fish is a Valorant icon. But before his competitive gaming journey began, Benji Fishy faced difficult circumstances. Born in Surrey, England, Benji was raised by a single mother after his father tragically passed away when he was a baby. When David sadly passed away, um, I was left with uh, Benji who was like eight months old. I had Charles who was seven. From a young age, Benji wanted to be the best at everything. He was dedicated to competition, whether it was in cricket or bowling and video games were no exception. It started with Call of Duty and Counter-Strike, but Benji eventually discovered the game that would change his life forever, Fortnite. 50 months. Nice. Nice! Nice! nice. Bro. Get a finish this, bro! Oh. Yeah, just let- oh. oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! I kind of just started playing it because I wanted to be like better than my friends. I wanted to be known as like the person that's the best in our school or the best out of our friend group, you know? Benji grinded the game day and night, qualifying for the $30 million 2019 Fortnite World Cup and proving that he was one of the best players in the world. It all happened like quite quickly, like over the like two months, quit school, joined the tier one team and qualified for the World Cup. It, it felt like I was just living in a dream because I mean, literally since I first got my laptop when I was eight, the only thing I wanted to do was to go pro. Unfortunately, things didn't exactly go as planned for Benji once he got to the World Cup. Takamura, Zayt picking up multiple eliminations. 30 players remaining, 29. We get closer and closer. Benji Fishy goes down, Tifu eliminated. While Benji was in the money, it was a heartbreaking loss. A player of Benji's caliber was expected to go much further. He himself expected to go much further. I was probably one of the best like mechanical players back then. And to do worse than other people expect me to do felt quite bad. I put extra pressure on myself rather than just worrying about how I was gonna do. I think that's what made me play bad. Benji's loss at the World Cup wasn't the end of his career. In fact, he was determined more than ever to prove that he was the best. And over the next couple of years, that's exactly what Benji did. He earned top finishes at various events throughout the rest of 2019 and 2020 before capping things off with a win at DreamHack Open in 2021, the first big tournament win of his career. He's dropping down to the back of the zone. He Ooh. picks up the elimination. Three, nine, one. That elimination has won Mr. Savage and Benji Fishy. The DreamHack Open for chapter two, season eight. And he's popping off. One more. Benji was a Fortnite god, and his skills had earned him more than half a million dollars in prize winnings. And amidst the grind, Benji had also become one of the most popular and famous players in the game, bringing in millions of views as a content creator on Twitch and YouTube, which is why his next announcement shocked everyone. 
I am officially quitting competitive Fortnite to pursue Valorant. Recently, I've fell out of love with Fortnite. I used to be able to play Fortnite like eight, 10 hours a day. But even last season, I was only playing during the tournaments just because I, I really couldn't force myself to get on the game. The reason I always wanted to be a pro gamer was because I always wanted to have a job that I enjoyed. So for me right now, it seems pointless carrying on something that I don't enjoy. This was a huge risk for Benji. He'd already built a massive community of fans in Fortnite, and there was no guarantee they'd follow him to a new game. And success in that game wasn't guaranteed either. At that point, Valorant had already been out for two years. The top level pros Benji wanted to play against had way more experience. They basically knew the game inside and out. And to make things even more difficult, Valorant is just a completely different beast than Fortnite. Battle Royales require a totally different set of skills than tax shooters. All of the game sense Benji had built up in Fortnite over the years was basically useless in Valorant. He couldn't simply build or edit his way out of trouble. The only thing that would potentially carry over was his raw aim. Benji stood to lose his fans, his legacy, and his career but he understood the risks. He wanted to be the best. And after conquering Fortnite, Benji knew he wouldn't be satisfied until he'd seen the peak of Valorant as well. I had a streaming contract of NRG and like it was it was good money. And I had to go from that to playing for tier two where I was getting no salary. Like I had no salary for like six months. And that was like a really big risk for me because you know, I was, you know, I'm supporting my family. I'm trying to support myself. Benji grinded Valorant nonstop, playing in open tournaments just to get noticed. And his hard work paid off when he joined Team Heretics ahead of the 2023 Champions Last Chance qualifier. Heretics had struggled for most of the season, and it seemed unlikely that Benji could suddenly fix things. And the LCQ confirmed those fears. Benji was, perhaps, the best player on the team. But as a whole, Heretics were disjointed and were knocked out in the very first round. Against three players on the side of Koi to keep them in it. He's gonna find one. But here we go, all comes out. It could not get much harder than this. Gets swung on. Colomenta closes it out and yet again, Koi win the look at the El Clasico. Heretic spent the off-season rebuilding, believing that Benji could be a superstar. And at the EMEA kickoff tournament, he showed everyone why. Benji's done well to hide for now. Good kill! Oh, what? what? Two for Benji! Mini has got another! The nades forced him back! And it's actually killed Angel! They look to run him. Heretic is waiting, but he doesn't win that fight. And oh, it almost falls onto Benji, but he just isn't missing today! Maybe even the kill on Boo. No, he's out. 40 HP still. Benji holding oh. strong! All of his experience as a pro in Fortnite gave Benji the ability to stay calm under pressure, and he became the clutch anchor player behind Heretic's success. But Masters Madrid, an international land where he'd be up against the best players in the world, was Benji's first real test, a chance to prove that he'd made the right decision. Unfortunately, things spun out of control immediately. That's who gets the drop on him, and actually, it's gonna be Heretic to draw first. Blood, but Tenz answers back, and perfectly so! Welcome back to the international stage, Tenz! We bloody missed you. But no way! Oh, he's still going! What? Heretics went down to Sentinels and PRX, heading home in dead last. It was a disappointing debut on the international stage, but it also fueled Benji's desire to prove to everyone that he was better than his team's performance in Madrid. Heretics bounced back in stage one, making it all the way to the grand finals. Once again, Benji was on the cusp of proving that he could be the best, but then disaster struck. But it looks like he's gonna go down without a fight until then. Benji's trying to heat up. Crocodile's still good for one. The traitor there. 2v2, make it all. Oh, oh, there you go. You got your backs to the wall. You've already got the spike being defused. Mini Boo's got so many problems. He tries to turn on a dime. And this is like, like Fnatic are taking us the distance. The time is running low. They've got to get a move on. Dirk has gotten down. There's still a chance here. But Bosa, Chronicle in unison, leaving it all in one. Oh, your VCT EMEA split one.
winners. There's so much that Team Heretics does really well. They are so good at getting 99% of the way. It's that last 1%. So it was our second ever best of five as a team. And I feel like you kind of need some experience in playing best of fives because it is a lot different than just a normal best of three. It's a lot more like heavy on your mental, um, especially when, you know, you're getting reverse swept because that can get quite scary. Um, but yeah, felt awful. That's probably the best way I can put it. Heretics barely had time to recover from that loss before flying to Shanghai for yet another international tournament. Benji led the team through groups and into the playoffs where they picked up a swift 2-0 win over EDG. But that victory was quickly followed by a colossal choke. G2 looking to deal with a devastating death blow. On to Heretics. And what looked unreachable, what looked uncertain, will be found. G2 are headed to the Mercedes-Benz Arena. But as disappointing as it was, the loss against G2 lit a fire in Heretics. They ran the lower bracket, sweeping Foot, 100 Thieves, and G2 in the rematch. For the first time since the start of his Valorant career, Benji was in the grand finals of an international event. He had all the momentum in the world, and it seemed like he was finally destined to lift the trophy. But once again, it all slipped through his fingers. Extra force to try to hold the line. Satchel traded a nade as well. Karen falls. Lakios on the snap. Benji Fishy dead. They're trying to work their way in and they cannot. And now it's on to Boo. He has the swing and it's time to kiss the ring. They are your master Shanghai champions. Heretics ran out of steam mere inches from the finish line. And what's worse, they were gaining a reputation as serial chokers. It was as if Benji was cursed to never fulfill his dreams. So when Heretics returned home for stage two with their full roster, things just didn't feel the way they did earlier in the year. The team managed to clinch a spot at Champions, but a surprise loss to Vitality in playoffs sent them to the final event of the year as EMEA's third seed, which placed them into the group of death alongside both Masters winners, Gen.G and FPX. If they were gonna make a run at Champions, Benji and Heretics would have to come out of the gates swinging. I know how good we can be when we're like ready to play, and we just weren't ready to play in stage two. And once we got to champs and we started practicing, like we, we were ready to play. Like we knew how good we were. For me, I just, I liked it because I, I was going to get revenge on at least one of the teams I played against. Needs to be sold on this diffuser when it just isn't happening. It's left all on to Autumn. He's fought throughout this series, but I think the job is done. Time and time again, you'll see these teams fight against each other. And unfortunately, FBX fall exactly the same way. But you know what, though? It's going to be an excellent series of matchups. I mean, you guys have Gen G going through, right? I mean, predictions, yes. yeah? Yeah, I think so. But think if Team Heretics could win this, this is the proof in the pudding that they are ready to actually be a contender to lift a trophy here and to show their growth. An impressive comeback in the series, in the map, and Benji Fishy to close it 13 to 10. Two to one. Everyone expected Gen G to be the ones taking this across the line. But somehow, Los Niños have gotten it done. Despite the impossible odds, Benji and Heretics placed first in their group. But things were only going to get more difficult from here on out. After a quick but close win over Fnatic, Heretics faced down the America's number one seed, Leviathan. Lev were tournament favorites. They dominated stage two on the back of the incredible firepower provided by their superstar duelist, Aspas. They seemed destined to win it all. And unfortunately for Benji, Aspas proved too powerful to shut down. I quite like that. It's instinctive play, smart approach, heads up, reactive, and it works wonders. Look at this guy. But Aspas is in the door. How much can one man do? That's the start. He knows there's another. He flies on in. He sprays him down. The time's starting to tick here. Have Leviathan done enough? Heretics starting to flounder, starting to falter. And this team was tailor-made for greatness. That loss to Leviathan put Benji and Heretics on the verge of elimination. One misstep, and their season would be over. But they'd been in this position before. With their backs against the wall, heretics clawed their way into yet another 
Grand Final. First, they defeated DRX, Korea's best team. Next, Heretics put a stop to Sentinel's resurgent Cinderella run. And then, in the lower bracket final, Leviathan stood in their way once more. But this time around, Benji and Heretics barely missed a beat. Looking so goddamn lethal. Tex gives it a go, but that's all he can do. Has come now in a 1v4. The time is up. This one's done. This has been a display of power. Message sent. It. It's go time, it's the go signal. King, come, waiting on the side. The paranoia is good. Beautiful and flashes. Miniboo flies in, but it's Brutifying Tex, and suddenly the falling like flies. King can only do it's so there. much. Heretics extinguish the fire that was lit underneath them. Map 2 says. They look to finish with a flourish. The paranoia going through Mazzino. Can you step up when it matters most? Can you handle the pressure? The answer is no. As Heretics. In name and in nature, defying belief, and look in the grand finals. In his first real season in the VCT, Benji had earned a spot in the Champions Grand Finals. Only two years after walking away from Fortnite and taking a massive risk by switching to Valorant, he was in the biggest matchup of the year. The arena, like, oh, it was so cool, man. Like, genuinely, both Shanghai, the Mercedes-Benz Arena, and the Inspire Arena in Korea, like, for me, it's nuts. Like, that's what I dream of. That's what I dreamt of when I first opted to Valorant. The fact I got to do that in my first proper year in VCT, like, twice, was, I don't know, man. When I'm up on stage, like, I'm just, I'm so happy. Like, that's when I feel the most alive. After falling in three grand finals throughout the 2024 season, it felt like it was finally Benji's time to lift his first big Valorant trophy. He's potentially out of there. Still oh, dropped down, 45 health still alive, and kicking his dad to the round. Most of the util are still coming up with him. And Benji returns to the fire and through the flames. You're not coming out unscathed. More where that came from. No clean kills really to be found here. And the TDG, they're gonna barrel the way through, they just can't do it. Here's the cleanup crew arriving in kind. Down from the side, wall up. Hunter's Fury, there is no escape. For the rest of his team, time has been fought. A purchase! A man dash and scramble! But an electrifying finish here to Haven. Heretics taking map number one. Heretics took an early lead, but Kang Kang refused to go down easily. His performances on map two and three put the pressure back on the Europeans. What comp are Heretics gonna play? Are they gonna go back to the, the Gecko, you know, the Gecko fade? Like, I think so, probably. You know, there's not as much preparation EDG has. It's more of like a team play brawly fight map. I think that's Heretics' strong suit. I think Heretics can take this one. Yeah, definitely. And I think that it is a very good point that you're bringing because that's what happened on Haven. Probably EDG prepared for the previous composition that we were expecting to see the Sage and the Gecko and, and whatnot. They got something completely different. Even though it's a comp that you would usually see on Haven, they were not prepared for the macro of it. Now with Bind, Heretics has the chance to do the same and they need to do it and they, if they want to stay alive in this grand final. I love that the desk was bringing up Heretics BO5 win rates this year. They've only won two out of six best of fives that they've been in so far. They've lost three of them domestically. They've lost one of them in the grand finals of Shanghai. Those are learning moments, but they can't let it slip from them again. Not to a team where it's their first ever time in a spot like this. And look at the carve their place in the history books by being at champ winners here. Benji instantly answers. Pixel angle to work with Nate. This is cheeky. Dodges rebound, snake bite at hand. Heretics carving out chunks and pieces of the map, but they're being met here. At least the firepower. Chi Chu cannot spray them down in time. He thrashes there alongside the seas. His players need to be defended. Woot steps up to the challenge, but dropped inside. Kekang. Overtime in sight. And EDG are hungry for it. Trying to will it forward. Fuse the night, but the shots are wide. They don't have it. Time. Time. It's not a line, man! Heartbreak for EDG! The tiniest of differences! The dramatic end to map four meant the series was going the distance. Abyss would decide the 2024 Valorant World Champion. Benji had fought for years to finally see the top again, but it simply wasn't meant to be. Kang Kang in hand, the signature weapon of this man right here. 
Been highlighting him, been gassing him. He's going to be under that pressure, but still delivers. And shirt time over the all. Paranoia sweeps. This is it. Attempt to deny. Quick scope in Blaze DDG. It's up to Boo to push them back and away. TP's up and over. No kill to be found. It's one man. What can he do? Against the bite of EDG. Absolutely squat. When it gets that close and you know you're that close to being world champions like for me i just had so many emotions going through my head my family being there like the whole crowd being there you know like seeing edg you know celebrating and stuff like all that put together just i just broke down i just remember crying like man that was a horrible moment even just looking back at it like i i can't i can't watch it back like because it just brings back the the feeling and i i don't want to feel that again benji may have lost that final but he found something more important. He had nearly made it four times this year. Heretics were arguably the most consistent team throughout 2024. Benji bent over backwards, popping off time and time again, showing everyone and himself that he could do it. He could be one of the best Valorant players out there. And I was able to one, prove to myself I was good enough, and also two, prove to everyone that doubted me about swapping and that I wasn't going to be good enough, that I am, you know, I am that guy that that did it, you know? Uh, yeah, it feels, it feels really good. I want to be the best gamer in the world. You know, obviously you've got Baker, you've got the goats, but I want to be a part of that.